Joshua 6, 1 to 20, the walls of Jericho fell outwards and down flat in their place. It has to go inwards or outwards. They discovered that it went outwards. There's some controversy about this. Let me just check with this map where we're located. Here's the map, and here's Jerusalem, Dead Sea, and Jericho north of Dead Sea. So it's a, I would say it's central, central Israel. In any case, let's move back. While excavating in and around Jericho between 1930 and 1936, Professor John Garstang wrote, as to the main fact then, there remains no doubt the walls of the city fell outwards so completely that the attackers would be able to clamber up and over the, their ruins into the city. In addition to writing this independent description of this one particular find, he also signed it and had two of his co-workers witness and sign it themselves. Why did he feel it necessary to emphasize the authenticity of the statement to such a degree? Because the evidence from every other archaeological site around the cities, ancient cities of the Middle East, always showed the walls of the cities always fell inward when they were conquered. Every single one, except, of course, Jericho's. They all fell inward rather than out for a very simple reason. When attackers besiege a city, they are typically trying to get in, not out. So you bang the walls in. And yet Jericho's walls clearly fell outward. The reason for this can be found in the biblical account of the fall of Jericho when God caused the, the walls to fall down flat, allowing Joshua's army to clamber up over to seize the city. Jericho, Joshua 6, 1-20. All right, we're going to read that a little bit. Blow it up. Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and the valiant warriors. You shall march around the city of all the men of war circling the city once, you shall do so for six days. Also seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. And on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up, every man straight ahead. Straight up and over. So... Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let the seven priests carry seven, seven trumpets and ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Then he said to the people, Go forward and march around the city and let the armed men go on before the Ark of the Lord. And it was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carried the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward and blew the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord before them. The men, our men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark, while they continued to blow the trumpets. But Joshua commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you. Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord taken around the city, circling it once. Then they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Now Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually, and blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, and the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while they continued to blow the trumpets. Thus the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did so for six days. Then on the seventh day they rose early in the dawning of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. Only on that day they marched around the city seven times. At the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city shall be under the ban. It and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot and all who are with her in the house shall live, because she had hid the messengers whom we sent. But as for you, only keep yourselves from the things under the ban, so that you do not covet them, and take some of the things under the ban, and make the camp of Israel accursed, and bring trouble on it. But all the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and priests blew the trumpets. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down, literally, in its place. 
flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight ahead, and they took the city, just walking up and over. Now, it was a pretty thick wall. Take a look at a picture I have. Look at this picture. We're going to go online, put an online account. We can blow it up a little bit. Let's see if we can go online here. There we go. There it is. Pretty big. Now this, the thickness of this, this is a wall, but this, the thickness, it's laying down on its, uh, this is the bottom of it, and it fell down flat. See, they could come up and over it, its thickness, and there he is inside the city. So the wall isn't going forth, and then you have to go into it. You're already in the city by climbing up over it. He's at the base of the, the bottom of the wall that laid down outward flat. Let's go back to the article. So, the walls did come tumbling down. Gary Byers writes, In the spring of 1997, two Italian archaeologists conducted a limited excavation on the ancient tell of Jer Jericho. Lorenzo Nigro and Niccolo Marchetti, working under the auspices of the new Palestinian Department of Archaeology, Palestinian, not Jewish, excavated for one month in the fringes of Kathleen Kenyon's west and south trenches. They were dug earlier, much earlier. Their dig was the first foreign expedition to the Palestinian-controlled areas of the West Bank since the self rule began in 1994. So they want to get their own archaeological input. Here's the picture now. ABR's Brian Wood standing beside a section of the collapsed wall. That's him. After their excavation, Nigro and Marchetti announced they found no evidence for a destruction from the time of Joshua. Really? While it is too soon for the academic community to see details of their discoveries, their announcement suggests their excavation was conducted to disprove the biblical account of Joshua's capture of the city. That's why we have that picture. These people found a part of the wall already there that fell outward. After the excavation, they announced no evidence. And the, the Italian, while it is too soon for the academic community to see their discoveries, their announcement suggests their excavation was conducted to disprove the biblical account of Joshua's capture of the city. Is it po further possible that the Palestinian Authority supported this dig for the express purpose of denouncing any Jewish connection to the site? I'll leave that up to you. As to their evidence, Dr. Bryant Wood, director of the Associates for Biblical Research, ABR, and one of the leading experts on the archaeology of Jericho recently responded, it matters little what the Italian archaeologists did not find in their month-long dig. You don't find something, then you can't report it wasn't there. You're looking in the wrong place. The evidence is already in. Three major expeditions to the site over the last past 90 years uncovered abundant evidence to support the biblical account, he said. As Wood went on to point out, John Garstang and Catherine Kenyon both dug at Jericho for six seasons in a German excavation, directed by Ernest Sellen and Carl Watzinger, dug for three. All found abundant evidence of the city's destruction by fire in a layer related to the biblical account of 1400 B.C. September 1997, Dr. Wood visited Jericho and examined the results of the Italian excavation at first hand. Incredibly, he found the Italians had uncovered the stone outer revetment wall at the base of the tell with part of the mud brick wall built on top of it still intact. In the bulk of the Italian excavation at the outer base of the revetment wall, Wood noticed the remains of the collapsed mud brick city walls, which had tumbled. Not only did the Italians find the same evidence uncovered in the early excavation, it fits the biblical story perfectly. So they, they found the biblical story supported, and they turned, we, defi we found nothing. So the Italian excavation actually uncovered most of the critical evidence relating to the biblical story, said Wood. But even more exciting is the fact that all of the evidence from the earlier digs had disappeared over time. We only have records drawing in photos. But the Italians uncovered a completely new section of the wall, which we do not know still existed. I had my photograph taken standing next to the wall where the mud brick collapse had just been excavated. And there's that picture again. There's this picture, a smaller picture there. That's the butt end of it. But then that's what he discovered, and they reported that. So there's 
proof of the biblical account that wall, the wall is down because those walls were huge, tall to protect the city. And he, that, that's only about, the, the, it was about 20 or 30 feet thick. You can tell right there because he's probably six foot something. So, all the evidence from the early digs had discovered. We have records, drawings, and photos. Here's his photograph that was taken. <coughs> Unfortunately, the Italian archaeologists, the Palestinian authorities, the Associated Press, and most of the world doesn't realize any of this. We found one thing, we put another, but then this guy goes back and looks at what they dug around, and there it is. The walls fell outward and flat down, so that Joshua could just climb up over. It is a sad commentary in the state of archaeology in the Holy Land when the purpose of an excavation of the biblical site is to disprove the Bible and disassociate the site with any historical Jewish connection. But that's why the associates, the ABR, for biblical researchers and business. So pray for their efforts, or uh, I don't know if they're still in existence. This was uh, a couple of decades ago, more than a couple. In any case, there you go.